Python is one of the fastest growing programming languages across the world. Given its incredible versatility, Python can solve many types of software problems. With that said, it shouldn't come as a surprise that Python is an indispensable tool for data specialists, analysts, and machine learning engineers, among many other professionals. We'll walk you through writing your first Python application. In doing so, we'll create a simple Python program covering rudimentary Python syntax before connecting the program to a database. Let's get started. With Python installed, we can now write and run our first Python program. All Python files and with the .py extension. You can create, edit, and save Python files with any text editor. To create your first Python file, navigate to the folder you'd like to create your file in and create a file called test.py. Next, open up this file in the text editor and type in the following code. Print, parentheses, hello world, exclamation point, close parentheses. Save your file, and in a terminal, navigate to the file's location. Then, run the file by calling python test.py. The line instructs your Python interpreter to execute the command you just wrote, and you should see the correct output, hello world. Remember, if you need to get to the Python 3 executable, you'll need to use Python 3 instead of Python. That would look like this, Python 3 test.py. Some of the examples will not work with Python 2. Now, this Hello World program works, but let's make it more interesting. To start, let's add a variable and a conditional statement to our program. We want the variable to store our name, and the conditional statement to check if the name provides, provided matches the one we define in the program. Depending on the result of the conditional statement, the program will print out a greeting or ask for another name. Note that unlike many languages, Python uses white space indentation as a delimiter for code blocks instead of traditional curly braces or keywords. This allows Python to have extremely readable code. Keep this in mind as you write your program. It will help you avoid issues caused by missing line breaks or indentation. Let's save our program and run it again to see the output. As expected, we see Hello Keenan. Now, in the next step, let's edit the name variable to store another name to see whether our condition is really working. We'll change the name to Brian. We'll save the program and we'll run the code again. In this case, we see the output, oh well, what is your name then, as expected. Since the, two, since the two names are not the same, the program executes a statement captured on the else branch of the condition. Now let's take our basic program log logic and turn it into a function. The function might be implemented this way. We'll begin by defining the function. If this part is confusing, you can check out our article on function definition in Python. In short, Python functions are prefaced by using the def keyword, followed by the function name. In this case, we'll call our function check name. Inside the function, we'll declare a variable answer. And use Python's input function, we'll ask the user whether the name that is printed is theirs and the user provides their answer by typing it into the terminal. We'll store the answer in a variable, and after that, we'll perform a conditional check. Note that the conditional now calls the lower method on answer. We use this method simply to ensure that the answer is lowercase, so that it's always evaluated identically, regardless of how the user types it in, whether it's yes, all lowercase, yes, all uppercase, or yes, part uppercase and part lowercase letters. And at the end of the file, we'll call our function passing our name. We'll save the file and we'll run it to see if it works. 
we'll answer no, and we'll get the else result. So we're sorry about that. Note that if you run this code using Python 2, you'll end up with a name error. Name no is not defined. Make sure this is this happens if you're running Python 2, so make sure that you have installed Python 3 and you're using it. Okay, let's take our function a step further and allow our user to enter their name even if it's not the, in the, the one the program expected. Implementing this functionality will only take one additional line of code and one change line. The new changes come right after the else statement. Instead of apologizing to the user, the program now asks for the user's name and greets them. After we save the code and run the program, we answer no this time, and we answer enter our name, and we get a response that greets us with our name. Having written a simple function to use variables, user input, and conditional statements, let's now connect to a simple SQLite database to store and retrieve our information. Let me make the terminal bigger here and get rid of the sidebar to make it easier to see. SQLite is a simple database that stored records in a file on a disk. It's got fewer features than production date great databases like MySQL and PostgreSQL, but SQLite is an easier database to start learning. Most of the feature differences between SQLite and other systems are in areas of complex data types, performance, and reliability. While such functionality is valuable for production systems, we're not going to cover it in this demo. The SQL syntax that we're using in the examples in this demo are very similar to what you can use with MySQL and PostgreSQL. To begin working with SQLite, we'll open the Python interpreter by typing Python. And then we'll create a new database called ExampleDB, create a new table in our database called User, and add a record for Keenan. We'll start by importing the SQLite 3 library. Next, we'll select the database to connect to. Because SQLite is file-based, the name we specify in this step is the name of the file where the data will be stored. SQLite will create the file if it doesn't exist. After we've selected the right database, we need to define the database cursor. This cursor will help us send queries to SQLite database and process their result. We can now use the cursor to run SQL queries against our database, our example.b database. Next, we need to create our user table. To make sure there are new, no errors for creating the table, we'll run another query first to drop any existing versions of the table with the same name. Now we'll create our table with two values for each record. an ID number, and a first name. The ID number will serve as a primary key, meaning that each user record will have a different identifier to help us distinguish them. At this point, we have a user table that we can start inserting values into. To, time to add our first record for Keenan. We'll now use the commit function to ensure that all changes have been saved to our user table. And then we'll close our connection to the example.db database. We now have an SQLite database, an example.db file in our current directory, and it should contain a single record for Keenan. Next, we'll retrieve that data to ensure that it is stored correctly. After we've inserted our first record, it's a good idea to verify that the data got stored correctly. To query the contents of our database, we'll use the Python interpreter again or we'll continue to use the Python interpreter. We closed our database, so we need to reconnect to it. And we also need to establish our cursor. We can now use the cursor to ex execute an SQL select statement to get all of the users from the users table and print their data one by one. 
because the cursor can contain multiple results, we'll need to iterate over them using the Python 4 statement. Note that when entering this print command, we need to make sure that we typed in four spaces before the print statement. Indentation of the code using spaces helps the Python interpreter understand how the print statement relates to the for statement above. This output shows us that the record for Keenan that we entered in the previous section is present in the database and its user ID is 1. It's interesting to note that we didn't specify which identifier we wanted Keenan to get. The database decided that for us due to our use of the primary key statement on the ID column. When we define a numeric column and make it a primary key, the database will pick a higher ID number for each new record. With the database created and with the first user record correctly stored, we can now upgrade our check name function to, re to return the person's ID from our database if there's a record for that name. Let's exit our interpreter and clear our screen and go back to our code. Let's have a look at how we can access the database records in our test.py file. We'll update the check name function to check whether the person's name is already in our SQLite database. And if it is, we'll greet them. And if it's not, we'll tell them that they're not in the database yet. To access the database, we'll need to import the SQ3 Lite library into our database with the statement import SQLite3. Next, we'll define our function. But this time, instead of passing in the name parameter, we'll ask the user to input their name in the terminal. Then we'll connect to the database and execute a query to retrieve all the user IDs that match the name that the user gave us. We'll save the first ID in a variable name result. If result isn't empty, we found a match. We'll print out a greeting and share the ID that we retrieved. If result is empty, we'll let the user know we did not find a matching record in the system. We'll close the database and call the check name function at the end of the file and call the check name function at the end of the file. Let's run our new program and see what happens when we enter a name that isn't yet present in the database. What is your name? Brianna. Oh, and as expected, we couldn't find your user ID in the system, Brianna. And now let's try this for Keenan, who already has a database record. Hello, Keenan, your user ID is one. We get the message with Keenan's ID back as expected. Congratulations, you've just built a simple Python application that is communicating with your database, storing variables, getting user input, and running conditional statements. You can expand your program by asking the user their name and storing it in the database if there isn't a record for them already. You could also tweak the print statements to clean up the unnecessary white space in the program's output. If you want to learn more about how to write a Python application, consider enrolling in a Udacity Nano Degree program, where you'll complete hands-on projects and get valuable career support. We offer an Introduction to Programming program, which is great for beginners to HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and or Python. If you're particularly interested in Python, check out our Python for Data Science Nano Degree program, which provides a more specialized approach to mastering the language. Enroll in our Introduction to Programming Nano Degree program or Python for Data Science Nano Degree program today.